Page 1. Pure, White and Deadly, by John Yudkin, 1972. How Sugar is Killing Us and What We Can Do to Stop It. 0.1. Introduction to the 2012 edition by Robert H. Lustig, M.D. A Telegraph Top 10 Diet Book, Pure White and Deadly by John Yudkin is a must-read for those concerned with how much sugar we consume every day. Sugar It's killing us. Why do we eat so much of it? What are its hidden dangers? In 1972, when British scientist John Yudkin first proved that sugar was bad for our health, he was ignored by the majority of the medical profession and rubbished by the food industry. We should have heeded his warning. Today, one in four adults in the UK are overweight. There is an epidemic of obese six-month-olds around the globe. Sugar consumption has tripled since World War II. Using everyday language and a range of scientific evidence, Professor Yutkin explores the ins and outs of sugar, from the different types, is brown sugar really better than white, to how it is hidden inside our everyday foods, and how it is damaging our health. Brought up to date by childhood obesity expert Dr. Robert Lustig MD, his classic expose A tilde copyright on the hidden dangers of sugar is essential reading for anyone interested in their health, the health of their children and the health of modern society. A valiant attempt to warn us against our lust for sucrose, British Medical Journal. A medical classic, London Metropolitan University. Arguably the leading nutritionist of his time, Guardian Worldwide, around 180 million tons of refined sugar is produced each year and the UK market alone is worth nearly a pound one billion. Little wonder that no one listened to eminent nutritionist Professor John Yudkin when he called sugar pure, white and deadly back in 1972 and quite rightly warned of the links between excessive consumption and heart disease Catherine Collins, principal dietitian, St. George's Hospital. John Yudkin, August 8, 1910, July 12, 1995, was a British physiologist and nutritionist whose books include The Slimming Business, Eat Well, Slim Well and This Nutrition Business. He became internationally famous with his book Pure, White and Deadly, first published in 1972, and was one of the first scientists to claim that sugar was a major cause of obesity and heart disease. Robert H. Lustig MD has spent the past 16 years treating childhood obesity and studying the effects of sugar on the central nervous system and metabolism. He is the director of a UCSF weight assessment for teen and child health program and also a member of the Obesity Task Force of the Endocrine Society. His YouTube video lecture Sugar, The Bitter Truth has received over 2 million hits. He recently appeared on the BBC Two documentary The Men Who Made Us Fat in his book Fat Chance, Beating the Odds Against Sugar, Processed Food, Obesity, and Disease is being published in autumn 2012. WH Why Do People Eat So Much Sugar? WH Why Do We Know So Little About ITS Dangers? How Strong Is the Scientific Case Against Sugar? Should IT even be banned altogether? John Yudkin was one of the first to point out the dangers of sugar when he published the original edition of Pure, White and Deadly in 1972. Now, in this extensively rewritten and expanded edition, he reveals the new evidence about the dangers of sugar and its drastic consequences for our health. In Everyday Language Professor Yudkin explains how sugar consumption is linked to diabetes, heart and liver disease, dental caries and other conditions. He pays particular attention to its effects on young children and shows how they, like everyone else, can benefit from reduced sugar intake. He also examines the role of the sugar industry, which has made strenuous efforts to dismiss the case against sugar. Pure. White and Deadly is a shocking indictment of a product that is an everyday, and often invisible, 
part of our diet. It should be read by all who are concerned with their own and the nation's welfare. Penguin Books Acknowledgements Much of the experimental work that I shall cite here was carried out in the Department of Nutrition at Queen Elizabeth College. I have been most fortunate in having had, over several years, many colleagues and research students who have contributed greatly to the ideas and to the hard work involved in the slow, the enormously slow, unraveling of some of the problems that we have tackled. Without their collaboration many of the facts I quote would not have been known. Finally, I must say here how grateful I am to the many firms in the food and pharmaceutical industry that for 25 years have given me such constant generous support in the building up and maintenance of the Department of Nutrition. For many of them, the results of our research were often not at all in their interests, yet it was largely with their help that we were able to work on those problems that, to me, seemed of such importance. Prophecy and Propaganda Introduction to the 2012 edition by Robert H. Lustig, M.D. Everything old is new again. Take fashion, for example, bell bottoms, culottes, miniskirts, wedge heels, thin ties and fancy lingerie are back. A silent film won the Oscar for Best Picture in 2012. The bubblegum rock band ABBA and swing dancing are in vogue again. Speciality cocktails are making a comeback, martinis are the rage, and now there are 80 varieties. Even phonographs and vinyl LPs have a new following. Ideas come and go as well. Someone is always on the cutting edge. The argument seems inescapable. It gains a following, sometimes a bit too zealous a following. Then it falls out of fashion, due sometimes to philosophy, sometimes to experience, sometimes to competing world events, and sometimes to dark forces attempting to maintain the status quo for their own purposes. But science should be based in fact, not fashion. And policy should be based on science. Facts shouldn't change. And indeed, they don't but their interpretation does. Consider the idea that inflammation causes heart disease. First espoused in the late 1800s after the invention of aspirin by Bayer, this idea was relegated to the dustbin of medical science in favor of the cholesterol hypothesis, which reigned for the second half of the 20th century. But over the last decade, the A inflammation hypothesis has made a decided comeback and is now thought to be the primary factor in the genesis of atherosclerotic plaques and thrombosis. Sadly, interpretation of medical science is frequently influenced by the dark forces of industry, out to make a killing. And when there is money to be made, there will be big winners, but also big losers a including those killed. Witness the tobacco debacle. The risks of smoking have been known since the 1930s the U.S. Surgeon General Report of 1964 squarely faced down the tobacco industry. That put the tobacco propaganda machine into overdrive to squelch the science and any scientists who stood in their way. My colleague at the University of California, San Francisco, Dr. Stanton Glantz was, and to this day still is, public enemy number one of the tobacco industry. For 25 years he was a, a prophet in the wilderness. Stan warned about Big Tobacco's tactics at every level, the political buy-offs, the marketing, the advertising to children, product placement in movies. He even uncovered blatant fabrication of data by the industry to exonerate their product. What did it get him? 25 years of constant battles both in the courtroom and in the court of public opinion. He was painted as a, a false prophet, a zealot. But Stan had the courage of his convictions. More importantly, he had the data. 
Of course, he was, and still is, right on target. Indeed, who determines the difference between a prophet and a heretic? Whoever gets to write the history. It's only with our retrospectoscope that we seem to have 2020 vision. Ask Galileo. And so it is with Dr. John Yudkin. Let's set the stage. In 1955 President Eisenhower experienced a heart attack while in office. The issue of heart disease and its prevention was thrust into public consciousness. What component of diet caused heart disease? This was the seminal issue in public health, disputed in academic circles and the media throughout the 1960s and 1970s. Two factions sprang up. Dr. Yudkin was a University of London physiologist, nutritionist and physician, and the primary exponent for the idea that sugar was the dietary factor promoting heart disease, and several others as well. First published in 1972, and updated with new science in 1986, Pure, White and Deadly was, is and remains, a prophecy. Yudkin foresaw the sugar glut that ultimately arrived with the advent of high fructose corn syrup. He preached in the wilderness, and no one listened. In the other corner, Anselkes was a University of Minnesota epidemiologist who, in 1953, first espoused the argument that saturated fat was the primary cause of heart disease, culminating with his volume Seven Countries, a multivariate analysis of death and coronary heart disease, Harvard University Press, Cambridge, 1980. The debate grew beyond the academic the ranker got up close and personal, with Keyes declaring in 1971, it is clear that Yudkin has no theoretical basis or experimental evidence to support his claim for a major influence of dietary sucrose in the etiology of coronary heart disease. His claim that men who have CHD are excessive sugar eaters is nowhere confirmed but is disproved by many studies superior in methodology and or magnitude to his own and his evidence from population statistics and time trends will not bear up under the most elementary critical examination. Keys. A. Atherosclerosis, 14, 193 8 202, 1971. Three scientific findings of the 1970s undid Yudkin's case and sealed his fate. Firstly, by studying the genetic disease familial hypercholesterolemia, victims experience heart attacks as early as 18 years old. Michael Brown and Joseph Goldstein discovered low density lipoproteins. LDL, and the LDL receptor, which won them the Nobel Prize, leading to the hypothesis that LDL was the bad actor in heart disease. Secondly, dietary studies showed that dietary fat raised LDL levels. Thirdly, large epidemiological studies showed that LDL levels correlated with heart disease in populations. Slam dunk, right? It's the fat, stupid. The Pharisees of this nutritional holy war declared Keyes the victor, Yudkin a heretic and a zealot, threw the now discredited Yudkin under the proverbial bus and relegated his pivotal work to the dustbin of history, as this book went out of print and virtually disappeared from the scene. The propaganda of alo fat as the treatment for heart disease was perpetuated for the next 30 years and the cluster of diseases, obesity, diabetes, hypertension, lipid problems, heart disease, collectively termed the A-metabolic syndrome increased in a parabolic fashion under the canopy of the sugar industry and their propaganda machine. But good ideas die hard. Larger studies started to demonstrate that serum triglyceride levels correlated with heart disease, with sugar consumption being the primary driver. And there wasn't one type of LDL, there were two, large buoyant LDL, driven by dietary fat, but which was neutral in terms of heart disease and small dense LDL, driven by dietary carbohydrate, and which oxidizes quickly, driving atherosclerotic plaque formation, hardening of the arteries. 
the Atkins diet was now being taken seriously. Carbohydrates started to assume center stage in promoting metabolic disease, with sugar consumption implicated as the most notorious carbohydrate. I stumbled upon Dr. Yudkin quite by accident in 2008. I was in Adelaide, Australia, giving a talk at the Australasian Association of Clinical Biochemists on my research into the role of sugar in the pathogenesis of metabolic syndrome. Dr. Leslie Bennett said to me, Hey surely you've read Yudkin, and I admitted I hadn't. When I got home, I looked for pure, white and deadly, and couldn't find it in our UCSF library or in any bookstore in San Francisco. Eventually I got it by interlibrary loan. I opened the book, and it opened my eyes. I already knew from my own work that sugar at our current rate of consumption is a medical disaster. But to learn that Yudkin foresaw what a problem sugar was 36 years earlier, and at a much lower dose, that is before the advent of high fructose corn syrup and the 2 liter bottle, was a true revelation. Indeed, I was a Yudkin disciple and I hadn't even realized it. Yudkin didn't have the voluminous data that exist today. He had correlation, but not causation. He didn't have mechanism. He didn't know that sugar caused insulin resistance by being turned into fat in the liver through the process of de novo lipogenesis, or that sugar induced protein damage through the Millard or Browning reaction. He didn't know that sugar was weakly addictive, although he surmised it. Despite that, pure, white and deadly draws direct lines between sugar and dental caries, gout, autoimmune disease, heart disease and cancer. Indeed, it shows that sugar consumption and mortality rates go hand in hand. In the face of the current science and nutrition explosion, and the fall of the low-fat hypothesis, Penguin Books UK has chosen to reissue this a old book, which is a new again. We are now almost 27 years removed from Dr. Yudkin's 1986 update. Surely, with all we've learned, this book must now be obsolete, isn't it? Not at all. First of all, true prophecies don't go out of style. That's like saying Darwin's The Origin of Species is irrelevant because Darwin didn't know what genes were. Secondly, it is a signpost on a journey of pilgrimage. It provides you with perspective on where you've come from, and where you're going. And lastly, Yudkin correctly fingered the sugar and food industries for what they were, and still are. Those who don't understand history are condemned to repeat it especially in the face of persistent propaganda. And this book is history. I'm proud to be a Yudkin disciple, to contribute to resurrecting his work and his reputation, and to assist in the advancement of his legacy and public health message. Every scientist stands on the shoulders of giants. For a man of relatively diminutive stature and build, Dr. John Yudkin was indeed a giant. Page 11